in the movie theaters nowadays. Yeah, that's more the movie theaters. <laughs> there, yeah, I'm thinking of it, 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 even at uh, the uh, drugstores. They're, they're uh, uh, you know, so-called so -called on sale. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what you paid for the big box of the candy. Yeah. With Rudolph Valentino's picture on the tin. <laughs> oh wow! Can you imagine what those things would be worth nowadays? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know people that collect paper and memorabilia. They would just die for that. Yeah, because I, you know, my as we're talking, my mind is back there. It really is spooky, because I'm in my my I was the youngest of six, and. Uh, my my sisters were. Uh, oh wait, wait, we get back. Oh, to there's another story. one. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's uh, Laurel and Hardy. Uh, that's Laurel and Hardy Au Naturel, and that was taken, I, I guess, around 1940, uh, just when they had finished with Hal Roach Studios, when their Hal Roach contract was up, and they moved over to 20th Century Fox and Metro Goldwyn Mayer. Unfortunately, those next five years for Laurel and Hardy were very sad ones. Uh, they weren't able to make movies in the old way at the Hal Roach, the, like they made them at Hal Roach Studios where Stan could uh, think up the ideas or uh, work as a gag man. He was merely an actor at yeah, 20th Century Fox. That's Project. funny how, the, how, the, the, how when they got more money and bigger studios took over, no one knew how to handle Buster Keaton. They didn't know how to handle any of those guys. No, no. Keaton said that the uh, worst thing he ever did was to uh, go to MGM. Oh, yeah. Uh, because, I mean, his, his films are just terrible. And then, and then on top of it all, they teamed him with Jimmy Durante for some awful movies. I mean, the only movie that's really worthwhile that Keaton did for MGM was the first one, The Cameraman from 1928. Yeah. That's, that's oh. a wonderful movie. And then, then Spite Marriage from 29 is also quite good, but you could see that Keaton was starting to lose grasp. Uh, no, no on, definitely. On, yeah. it, it really is, because it, it that, that classic shot of him where the building falls. Yeah, from Steamboat Bill Jr. Oh, that is, and, and he's standing right there. That is so scary and so funny. Yeah. When that he's standing right there where the window or door is. And yeah, it was a seven-ton facade yeah. that came down, yes. oh, yeah, and he just missed it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, 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 just stop and think of anybody who's got the guts to do that. Yeah. Oh, he was, he was something. Sometimes I wonder whether Keaton was sane. <laughs> no, I, well, I don't think you had. I don't think you could have been in those days to do a lot of the things that they yeah. did. Yeah. Well, Harold Lloyd too. When you, yeah. when you consider what Harold Lloyd did in the They did their stunts without all that. Uh, they didn't have no all process the shots. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, hanging from that clock. And yeah. <laughs> well, Laurel and Hardy did that also in a 1929 short called Liberty, where they were uh, hanging from the side of a building, and you know that was real. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know they did not have process shots. Well, in that I mean they had they had well, safety they platforms. Anyway, yeah. You know, in, in Swiss Miss, it was, it was it was very carefully shot. Yeah. That was, obviously, but. Uh, Okay, because imagine a gorilla falling down the ice yeah. of a mountain and still coming back at the end of the movie. Well, Swiss Miss, that was done with process shots. By that time, yeah. uh, we had progressed considerably right. in our filmmaking. Because yeah, now that's one that, that actually worked with, with, uh, with, uh, with the use of more knowledge helped yeah. that movie along. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, well, problem, the only problem with Swiss Miss was that the um, film had a romantic subplot that interfered oh, true, with yes. Laurel and Hardy well, routines. I can't think of the guy's name. But Walter uh, Wolf King. Walter Wolf King cause he and Della Lind were in that. Walter Wolf King uh, comes into my life later. As he's, he, was, um, he, was, he was on a lot of operetta tours. Yes. And, uh, and you might remember uh, uh, him in uh, A Night at the Opera with the Marx right. Brothers. Well, he's, isn't he in one of the Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire? Is that? Uh, no. Is there no. somebody like him? Yeah, yeah. Not, not that I recall. No, you're right, you're right. No, it's... Uh, Okay. That, that's I mean, it. later on, I, I remember he found himself at Monogram Pictures <laughs> doing well, movies, but I think... So did John Wayne. <laughs> uh, no, John no, Wayne no, was at Republic. Republic. Okay, here we are with your autograph. Okay, yeah, there's, there's an autograph. Uh, that's from 1963. Uh, at the time, I believe I had pneumonia, <laughs> and that's why Stan wrote, Cheer up, Lewis, good luck, <laughs> okay. 1963. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, I have a few of those at home, and I have numerous letters from him as well. Huh. He believed in, in writing to uh, all of his fans, especially the uh, film collectors. And not only that, I would write to him and ask him, gee, where, where could I get a print of, I remember I wrote to him and I asked, where could I get a print of Bonnie Scotland? And he said, well, I have this friend in Hunt Huntington, West Virginia named Mike Pollack. Why don't you write to him? Oh. And so uh, Mike told me where I could get one, that somebody had a print of it, and I bought it. And years later, when Mike was terminally ill, he uh, emailed, uh, not emailed me, he uh, wrote me a letter, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> he um, wrote me a letter and he said, Lou, I'm getting rid of my collection and he sold me a print of Pick a Star, which is a very rare print and the print belonged to Stan Laurel himself, so I do oh. have Stan Laurel's print 
Oh, of Pick a Star. When, when did that come out? Uh, when did that, uh, 1937. As a matter of fact, Laurel and Hardy are only guest stars in that. Oh, I know that movie. And yeah. it stars uh, Patsy Kelly, Jack yeah. Haley, and Racina Lawrence. Yeah, they're... And uh, Racina Lawrence I met uh, many years ago, and she told me that they were just delightful to work with Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. She was the uh, school mom in uh, Our Gang? Uh, that's right, yeah, yeah. She played Miss Jones or Miss Lawrence in the yeah, uh, yeah. One Reelers. I think her first Our Gang comedy was Arbor Day from 1936. Uh, oh, oh, this is... Okay, this is, uh, well, this is probably one of my favorite Laurel and Hardy's next to Way Out West. Um, it was called The Devil's Brother. It was originally uh, premiered as Fra Diavolo, based on um, uh, Aubert's 1830 opera. And uh, when Hal Roach decided to release the film as Fra Diavolo, MGM, their distributing company, said to Hal Roach, well, what does that mean? And he said, well, it means the devil's brother. And they said, well, why don't we call it the devil's brother? And Hal Roach said, well, you know, we're miss you're missing the point here. This is a famous opera that we're doing this on. And Louis B. Mayer stepped in and he said, we're calling it the devil's brother. So they <laughs> did. And uh, much to the chagrin of both Stan Laurel and Hal Roach, who always called it Fra Diablo. Incidentally, I met Hal Roach. I was at his home back in uh, 1979 and uh, uh, stayed there for about an hour. He lived in Bel Air. Okay. His neighbors were Lucille Ball and uh, Groucho Marx. Oh. Interesting. Well, <laughs> well you know, he, a lot of people started with him when they were kids and so on. Yeah. With, well, not not a lot, but it's Jackie Coogan, Jackie Cooper, Jackie Cooper, Jackie Coogan. Mm -hmm. and was well, Mickey Rooney was in a not they weren't really Hal Roach were they when he uh, Mickey Rooney was in, was in the Mickey McGuire yeah, series, yeah, which was a rival. Yeah, which was a rival. Yeah, it was yeah. uh, uh, Hal Roach told me that Mickey uh, Mickey Rooney had auditioned for our gang, and so did Shirley Temple, and they both didn't make it. Yeah, and isn't it ironic because Shirley Temple became the top box office draw. Yeah, but, see, but, but, it, but the way that they use them, she, I mean, if, if she had continued with Hal Roach in our gang, she never would have been. No, the top no, absolutely star, not. So. But she's damn lucky that. She, well, I know it. I, I saw a movie that was her the other day that I didn't even realize she was in. It was uh, uh, change, uh, not Change Partners. Uh, uh, it was it was a Ginger Rogers, uh, Janet Gaynor, uh, Charles Farrell, uh, James Dunn movie, and. Uh, it's uh, how, uh, something about heart. heart is in the title, and it's one of uh, she gets she's third from the bottom. Shirley Temple is third from the bottom <laughs> in billing, and uh, oh. then I think Janet Gaynor works for it's a Janet uh, Gaynor. It's got to be a Fox film. It is. Yes. Okay, and Ginger Rogers. Ging oh, Ginger Rogers. Change of Hearts. Change of Hearts. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's 1933. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I haven't seen that one in years. But it was just, it was on TV the other day. Wow. So uh, uh, and I, I never did see it when I was a, when I was a kid for some reason. I got I got tired of the uh, I, w I wanted to see uh, not westerns but I le I like musicals. Yeah. That's when Ginger Rogers was in a musical I saw it but because uh, she made all those with Dick pa not all, she only made a couple with Dick Paul but she did. Uh, she was in Forty Second Street. Uh, it, she yeah. was in um, uh, Twenty Million Sweethearts was mm -hmm. her big one with him. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's uh, Warner Brothers. Yeah. And of course in 1933 when she was first teamed with Fred Astaire and flying down to Rio. Right. Yeah. But. Uh, when they had fifth and sixth billing or something like that. Yeah, yeah well, Flying Down to Rio starred uh, Dolores Del Rio and Gene Raymond. And, and then in Mexican. And Raul, Raul Rulian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Before you got to them. And then, well, yeah, that, and then uh, Ginger Rogers and then Fred Astaire got yeah. billing after her. For the last time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, th that <laughs> incidentally was Fred Astaire's second movie. His first film was Dancing Lady yeah. at MGM. And he danced, uh, he had a dancing number but with uh, Joan, Crawford. Uh, Joan Crawford. But he actually, right. Flying Down to Rio was his first, first movie. And it wasn't ready to be released, so they loaned them to MGM, and consequently the MGM movie came out first. Mm. So it turned out his first movie became his second movie. Right. <laughs> so yeah, right. that's sort of like Montgomery Cliff, because well, years later, Montgomery Cliff, the first film he made was The Search for right, MGM. Right. And um, no, it was Red River, excuse me. Uh, but MGM uh, wanted to wait until, or uh, no, uh, Howard Hawks wanted to wait until Red River was released. Yeah. And then to see how he did, and then they released The Search, yeah. which is a marvelous film. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that's the closest Americans ever came to neorealism yeah. uh, was in that film. Yeah, that reminded yeah, remind me a lot of Murnau when, when you see it. Murnau? The, way, the Murnau. way it was filmed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Movies like uh, Sunrise. Yeah. I mean, that goes back. We were talking right. about that in the green room before. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you know, the, 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 the movies, the, 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 the topics 
of the silent movies just before they were talkies and so on.